Hello, in today's video, we're going to learn about scatter plots, Pearson's R, and standard scores. First, we're going to jump over into JASP, and we have a data set, and I want to point out that this data set has 99 observations. So 99 observations, that's going to come into play in a second. The first thing we want to do is create a scatter plot, and then calculate, calculate Pearson's correlation. So if we go up to regression, and then correlation. Um, we want to take our variables. In this case, we have two variables, variable A and variable B, and we want to put them into the variables section and bring them over. And then notice that that immediately calculates um, variable B correlated with variable A. The Pearson's R is 0 0.126, and the p-value is 0.214. Now we also want to calculate a scatter plot, and the scatter plot in JASP is incredibly easy. Just under plots here, you're going to click on scatter plots. Now I do also want to cover, you know, we talked in class, how do I report this value in APA format? So if I jump back over into PowerPoint for a second, remember in class we learned that we're going to say parentheses R, and that's for Pearson's R. We're going to plug in the degrees of freedom, which we learned was N minus 2 equals the correlation and then comma the p-value. So let me copy that real quick and then put it down below so you see where we're going. So the degrees of freedom again, we had 99 observations, so 99 minus 2, n minus 2, we know that that's 97. So r brackets 97 equals, again the correlation, that was wrong. The correlation here is Pearson's r is 0.126. So for correlation, we're going to say 0 0.126. And then finally, the p-value. And the p-value here is 0, p-value, 0 0.214. So for the p-value, I'm going to put 0 0.214. All right, so that's, again, this, period. this statement right here is how I'm going to have you report your answer on the exam and on the quizzes. And then in addition, um, this is how this is how you write it in APA format. So if you're writing a um, a paragraph, you would say you know something to the sense of uh, variable A was in this case not correlated because the core the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. So variable A was not correlated with variable B, and then you would put this statement. Okay. Now let's look at another example. Let me close this, and because we did so well on our survey we have the survey data also so let me open up the class project and here is our survey data now i will say a couple things number one um, all of the stress quote unquote questions i use those in order to calculate this stress um, variable and i will say that if the if the question was negatively um, worded then i flipped the question so the, the first question I flipped, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth, and then I added the, all ten of those questions together to create this stress score. And the, the concept is that the higher the value, the more stress the person has. Now, this question 10 clean, um, these are the questions that said, how many hours do you, in a day, how many hours do you sleep? How many hours do you read? How many hours do you watch TV? Um, the, the reason I put this underscore clean on here is there were a few responses where they, you know, they said they, they basically slept for 22 hours or 24 hours a day, or they, they read for 24 hours a day. So anyways, I, I didn't want that to skew our data and I didn't think that was realistic. So, um, any of the hour questions, hours in a day, anything over, I think 22 or something, I just, I blanked those out. I removed them and called them outliers that were not realistic. Um, so what I want to do in this section in is I want to look at the amount of sleep that a person has, question 10, 1, and see if it's correlated with the amount of stress a person has. Now, think about this for a second What and think about, ask yourself, what is your hypothesis? The more sleep a person gets, do you think, do you hypothesize that on average their stress goes up or their stress goes down? So the, as sleep goes up, what happens to stress? Does it go up or go down? And let's investigate that. And again, this is real data. This is from our survey. So again, I'm going to go to regression and correlate. Now I need to get all the way down to stress 
and 10, 1, which again is how much sleep. Okay, so here's the value. So the Pearson's correlation is negative 0.221. Now again, what does a negative correlation mean? It, mean? it means that as sleep goes up, then stress goes down on average. And again, notice it's not incredibly strong, but it is, um, it, it is highly significant. So the strength, again, correlation goes between a negative one and a positive one. And the closer it is to one or negative one, the stronger the correlation. So this is a negative 0.22. Um, so it's not incredibly strong. However, it is very significant. And again, the significance is highly impacted by the number of observations. And in this case, we have over 500 observations. All right, so let's look at this scatter plot also. And again, this helps you to visualize again. So you see that the data is clumped up. And the reason it's clumped up is because people tend to sleep probably six to 10 hours a day. So there's not a lot, a lot of outliers. You can see one person said they slept about 14 hours a day. But notice that as the sleep goes up, then the stress goes down. And that's, that's what we're seeing here is this negative correlation. So as sleep increases, then the stress on average decreases. But you notice that it doesn't follow this long, very, that doesn't follow the line very strongly, um, but it's still negative. So it is significant with 500 observations, but the 0.22, it tells us that it doesn't follow that line very incredibly close. We're going to jump over into Excel and I'm going to show you how to work with standard scores. Okay. So the standard scores, I, I propose a problem here. Um, a data set follows a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 8. What is the standard score of an observation of 85? So let's do, let's do this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 1. What is the standard score of an observation of 85? If you remember the standard score is... Uh, Z equals X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put the subtraction sign in parentheses. 85 minus the mean of 100. Close parentheses, divide by the standard deviation of 8. And that means that I have a standard score of a negative 1.875. So the value of an 85 is 1.875 standard deviations to the left because it's negative of the mean. Now, what is the probability of an observation of 100? So in order to do that, um, I can use this function inside of Excel. But first, I need to draw the picture. So let's, let's figure out what we're doing here. So what is the probability of an observation? I uh, shouldn't say rate, but that's right. Above 110. So my mean's 100 and 110, and I want to know the word above. So now, let's go over to this picture here. So the mean is 100. And 110, is that to the left of 100 or to the right of 100? Good job, it's to the right. I'm assuming you guys answered. I don't know, maybe you didn't. So 110 is somewhere over here, and I want to know the value above 110. So should I shade below the line or above the line? Again, I said I want to know above 110. So I'm going to shade above up here. All right, so that's all shaded in. Okay, so my function in Excel is going to tell me um, what is below the line. So if I want to get the value above the line, I'm going to have to subtract it from 1. Okay, so let's go back to Excel, and I'm going to say equals. I think it's norm, there it is, norm.dist. And then you can see right here, it tells me what to put in. So X, my X is 110. And my mean is 100. And my standard deviation is 8. And I'm going to put true here because that's going to give me the value below the line. But I need what's above the line. So what do I need to do? I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to say 1 minus that. Okay? The 1 minus is because I want what's above the line. So I hit enter. And then so this area right here is 10% or 0.1 okay so that's the the probability of an observation being a, above 110 is 10.565 percent all right so number three what's the probability someone has a heart rate below an 80 
Below an 80. All right, so let's draw the picture. Hopefully I can hit undo here. Undo, 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 undo. All right, so where is 80? Is it to the left of 100 or to the right of 100? I'm pausing for effect. All right, it's to the left. So here's an 80. And it said, what's the probability of scoring below an 80? So I'm going to shade above the line or below the line. That's right. I'm going to shade down here. All right. Now, Excel, the function gives me the probability of being below a value. So all I have to do is type in my function. So again, I'm going to say equals, I already forgot it, norm dot dist and my value is x uh, what is it 80 my mean is 100 and my standard deviation is 8 and I'm gonna put true and that's my answer so there is a wow 0.6 percent chance of a value below an 80 that makes sense right because the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 8 so one standard deviation to the left is 92. Um, a second standard deviation to the left is an 84, and an 80 is even below that. So we know it's it's very small. Um, it's below less than 2.5 percent, right? So, <clears throat> all right. So then my last one. Here's here's the best part. You ready? What is the probability someone has a heart rate between 80 and 110? Let's draw that picture. 80 is already there, so I want to shade differently there, right? So undo, 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 undo. There's my 80, and 110 is somewhere over here. Let's put it right here for fun. 110. And it said, what is the probability they score between these two values? So I want to know this. Shading takes a lot longer in Excel. All right, so here's what I want to say. Um, if I find the Excel value, if I find what's below this line, okay, and then I find what's below this line, which would be down here, what would I do to find in between? That's right, I subtract the two. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to say equals. Uh, the first thing without the one minus, right? So I'm going to say histogram. Nope, that's not right. Norm dot dist and 110. <clears throat> so the x value is 110. The mean is 100. The standard deviation is 8. And I'm going to use true. That's going to give me the value below the 110 line. So now I'm going to subtract off the value below the 80 line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing, norm.dist. Uh, my value now is 80, my mean is still 100, and my standard deviation is still eight, and I'm still saying true. All right, so this is giving me the, the value below the 110 line, and I'm now subtracting the value below the 80 line, and lo and behold, there's my answer, 88.81%.